All right, guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be taking a look at overclocking, undervolting, fixing the temperatures and noise of the new RX480. This is, of course, just a reference RX480, so I'm certainly not looking for miracles coming out of it, especially in terms of overclocking. However, having a look around the web, it does appear that the card undervolts very nicely. And this is something that everybody should be doing with their graphics card because when you undervolt it, you are simply saving energy. You're cooling the card down. There is absolutely no reason not to do it. And in AMD's Crimson Drivers, they have a new application. What man? Oh dear. Whatever you think about the name, that's up to you. I'm not that keen on it. The program itself, however, is really nice. So we'll be going through all of these options, all the dials, all the knobs to turn, all that sort of thing. Before I start on this though, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at MSI Afterburner. Here we are down here. Now if we click on settings on Afterburner, the reason we're using Afterburner is that we want to monitor on the on-screen display stuff like the GPU load and the GPU's clock speeds. So if we click on the monitoring tab, we can see here that I have already selected GPU usage and core clock. Because it's a brand new card with a different type of power management, some of the power options aren't yet showing in Afterburner, but I would expect them to be added within the week or two. For now though, all we really care about is the GPU usage and the core clock speed. So if you select one of these, and then check this box down here saying show in the on-screen display, you can see up here it now says it is in the OSD, and what I normally do then is click on the on-screen display tab, and give it the hotkey of Control and O. So press it once to bring up the on-screen display, press it again to get rid of it. So click on OK. Now before I start, I'm going to reset everything back to full stock settings. And over here we can clear the data. All these things here I'll talk about in a second. But for now, I'm going to clear the data. Right, so as you can see, I am now running the 3D Mark Fire Strike demo. So what I want to do now is press Control and O to bring up the afterburner stats. And there we go. Right, so now we have the afterburner stats up and running. We can see that the GPU load is 100%, which is exactly what it should be. However, we can also see that the boost clock is not maintaining 1266 megahertz. In some cases, it is almost going below 1200. Simply put, what this means is the graphics card is throttling, either due to temperatures or due to power. And in order to figure out which one of these it is, we need to go back to Watman. Before we do that though, I'm going to test the graphics card power draw using Firestrike's graphics test 1 and 2. As you can see, it is hovering around the 265 mark up to maybe 270 watts here. This is on my old PC, which has a much less efficient power supply and an older CPU. This is why the numbers are a little bit higher than they were in my review of the RX 480. Graphics Test 2 appears to be hovering around 260 watts. That looks about 260 watts on average. And the final test is Fire Strike Combined Test. I use this and take the highest peak draw. So that was 272 watts peak. Now if we take a look at Walkman and look at the red line, we can see that the temperature did peak at 89 Celsius. So that's a pretty good indicator of why the card started to throttle. So if we scroll down in Walkman and check the temperature tab, we can see here that it is set to automatic and it has a maximum target of 90 degrees, at which point it will throttle in order to remain below this number and also a target of 80 degrees. Now 90 degrees is just a little bit too high for me. So what I'm gonna do is click on the box and set the maximum to 85. Now obviously that's going to make it throttle even worse, but what I'm going to do now is set the target temperature a little bit lower, and we'll make that 70 degrees. Now what this actually means is, if we now look over at the fan tab, we can change the speed of the fans. Again, just click on this box to switch it to manual. The minimum fan speed is exactly what it sounds like. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you may as well set the minimum fan speed as high as possible up till that point where the fan doesn't annoy you at all. And for me, that is around 1500 RPM. Your target fan speed is where the fan will ramp up to as soon as it hits the target temperature. So once the card hits 70 degrees, it will then ramp up until it meets the target RPM. Again, you need to figure out yourself what kind of noise level you can tolerate from the graphics card fan. Now, I watched Joker's video on this yesterday, and he prefers it around 3,000. For me, though, that is way too loud. So I'm going to set mine to 2,500 instead. There we go. 
Now, these temperatures are not fantastic while on the desktop. It is a reference cooler, remember, but more importantly, I am running two monitors right now. As you can see, I've got one to my left and I've got my main monitor, and this really does push the temperatures higher. In normal cases, you won't be doing that while gaming, so your temperature should be a bit lower than that. Once again, do not forget to click on apply. What we can do now is run Firestrike again, and hopefully we won't be throttling below 1266 megahertz. Right, so back to the Firestrike demo. And straight away we can see that there is a little bit of throttling still, in fact there we go below 1200 again. Now this can't be temperature related, because we've just changed all that. And I'm now running on only one screen. So the throttling issue must be due to a power limit. So let's just cancel the benchmark now, and go back to Wattman and fix the power limit. Right, so we're back in Walkman again and we have an issue with power which is causing the throttling in the graphics card. What I'm going to do right now though is turn off all this stuff that we don't need to worry about. We only care about the GPU megahertz and the temperature. So just check those boxes and turn the rest off. Now again, our temperatures are set and in order to set the power limit, you do actually have the temperature set to manual. If the temperature is set to automatic, you cannot click on the power limit because temperatures and power are of course very closely related. So make sure you're on manual and that way you can now change the power limit slider. Now as you might expect, the power limit starts at zero and has a range all the way between minus 50 and plus 50%. Now I'm trying to find out if this means board power or graphics chip power. In other words, the board power of the RX 480 is 150 watts. However, the power of the chip is only 110 watts. What this effectively means though, is that you can tell the graphics card to use 50% less power, or up to 50% more if it needs it. And this is the important thing here, you're not telling the card to use 50% more power, you're telling it to use up to 50% in those cases where it needs it. In other words, when it is throttling. It shouldn't need anything like 50% extra power, and obviously we've had all this PCIe thing, and a lot of people may be concerned about it, at least until the new driver comes. So if you're worried about changing this power limit, then by all means increase it by say 10% to start with. Now I've been playing around with this for days, and I'm just going to ramp it all the way up to 50%. Now one thing about this is of course, the higher the power limit is set, the higher the temperatures will go. So even though you're allowing the RX 480 more power to maintain its 1266 megahertz clock speed, you may again run into a temperature limit. These are just things that you need to worry about with reference cards and in what is basically a very old case that I'm using. But all the concepts here will clearly apply to the aftermarket cards and in fact any other Radeon card that you buy. But let's see now if this 50% power limit and the manual fan speeds that I set before are enough to prevent throttling in the Firestrike benchmark. Once again, do not forget to click on apply. Right, now instantly we can see that the graphics card is now maintaining 1266 megahertz. And even at the parts here that were difficult before, the card does not throttle. I can now hear the fan ramping up, but the card is still happy to maintain 1266 megahertz. But what we really need to do now is have a look and see just how badly this has affected the power draw. In graphics test 1 we can see immediately that the wattages are up around 280. The entire average of the run looks more like 283 watts, so that is up quite a bit on the stock run. In graphics test 2, the card appears to be hovering around the 265 watt mark. Graphics test 2 is a little bit different, there does appear to be peaks and troughs, but overall the wattage comes in around 265 on average. And finally, in the combined test, we have a highest reading of 282 watts peak. So again, that's up quite a bit, 10 watts on the first run. Right, so we have now effectively got rid of the throttling that the reference card started with. We also dropped down the maximum temperatures and we have increased the power limit in order to stop that throttling. It has come at a slight trade-off because we have increased the speed manually of the fans, again, not by a huge amount. But what we're really interested in doing is overclocking and undervolting. Now both the GPU and the memory can be overclocked, the GPU can also be underclocked and undervolted, whereas the memory can only be overclocked or undervolted. As you can see, the memory starts at 2000 MHz, and that can be increased all the way up to 2250 MHz maximum. I've never been a big fan of memory overclocks, and I do not believe that the RX 480 is going to gain an awful lot from it. So what I might do instead is undervolt the memory 
while keeping it at 2000 MHz. Now I've checked this one out, there's only one state that can be changed, and it ranges from 800 all the way up to 1150 millivolts. Now like I said, I've been tinkering with this for a few days now, and in all honesty, I would probably just leave this alone. If you do decide to increase the memory clocks, you may need to increase the voltage as well. But for me, I'm just going to let the card deal with that itself. By far and away, the more interesting one is, of course, the GPU. And the GPU has eight states, from zero up to seven. Again, we have two tabs, frequency and voltage control. If you click on this frequency tab, under normal circumstances, the GPU controls the frequency itself. In these seven states, which range between 610 all the way up to 1265 or maximum megahertz. Now each of these can be set individually, or you can increase them all simply by moving the slider. You can also decrease down to minus 30% and the frequency can be increased up to 30%. In my experience, you're not going to get anywhere near that amount. But if you just want a small boost, and we are talking a very small boost, you may get away with maybe 3 to 3.5%. Three the card is not a brilliant overclocker at all. But instead of that, I am going to set it manually. And the one we're really interested in is the final state 7, because we've already given the card all the power it needs. So theoretically, we want it to maintain state 7. So let's try 1300 megahertz. We're not going to bother changing the voltages yet, because there's a fair chance that 1300 megahertz will be fine at the stock voltage of 1081 millivolts. So let's try it out in Firestrike. And once again, before you do that, do not forget to click on Apply. Now what we're going to be looking for while we run the demo is anything strange on the screen. Anything at all that you see that you haven't seen before is called an artifact. If you see anything strange on the screen, chances are the benchmark is going to crash and your overclock is not stable. As you can see, the card has no problems holding 1300 MHz. Benchmark complete with no issues. It will be interesting to see what that has done to the power figures, however. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the answer to that is the power has gone up. Maybe by around about 10 watts, between 7 and 10 watts. So let's call that an extra 7 watts of power due to the overclock for an average of around 290. And as you might expect, in Graphics Test 2, we see a similar story. And what looks like an average increase of around about 5 watts of power. And finally, in the combined test, we see a peak reading of 289 watts, or 7 watts, over the stock value. Right, for those of you that are interested in the maximum overclock that I got, I did get to 1340 MHz, however, I decided to dial it back just a little bit to 1330 the state 7 voltage had to be raised just under 0.5 millivolts up to 1130. The memory overclocked fine to 2250 MHz and I just gave it another 50 millivolts to make sure. I opted to put the maximum temperature back to 90 with the target temperature at 72 and I just left the power limit at 50. In all honesty though, 10-20% is more than good enough there. I set both bands to 2250 RPM and that was pretty much at rock solid stable at 1330 MHz. In all honesty, overclocking not really my style because all this stuff like the extra temperatures, the extra noise, I just do not find it worth it. So for me, especially with the reference card, the smart thing to do with it is get rid of the throttling like we did before, find the sweet spot in terms of fan noise and temperatures, and then undervolt it so that it is stable, 1266 MHz. Right, so reset all the settings and start again. Fix up whatever temperatures you want. I'm going to go with 85 and 72. Don't forget your 50% power limit because you never want to throttle. And then set up whatever fan speeds suits you most. I'm just going to ignore the memory, and what we really care about is the voltage control on the GPU. Now here's the thing, all graphics cards are different. Some will accept higher voltages, some will accept lower voltages, and this is basically what affects the power usage of the card. It's a very important topic in fact, regarding Polaris in general, and one that I will talk about soon. But for now, all we really want to do is change these numbers here. And you could in fact say that the only really important one to change, because we will never be throttling, the most important one to change would be the final one, which as you can see is 1081 millivolts. Having played with this for days now, 1020 millivolts is the lowest that I can put the voltage while maintaining 
the 1266 boost clock. So if this was 1300 megahertz, there is no way that this 1020 millivolts would do it. It needs to be closer to 1075 or basically very close to what it is at stock. There is of course nothing stopping you from manually adjusting the rest of the states as well. And here are the numbers that I settled on. 800 for state 1, 800 again for state 2, 850 for state 3, 925 for state 4, state 5 and state 6 at 1000 and 1020 for the final state 7. So now we're going to apply that and see what it does in terms of the power draw. On graphics test 1 we are hovering around 266 watts. So that's a pretty good saving of 17 watts over the stock voltages. In graphics test 2 there is a saving of around 15 watts simply due to the undervolt and now averaging 250 watts. And finally on the combined test we see a peak rating of 268 watts or 14 watts down on the stock voltages. So that is pretty much that guys. We started off with a hot, throttling, fairly noisy graphics card which consumed an average of 265 watts of power. And after a bit of tinkering we got rid of the throttling, lowered the temperatures by a good 5-10 degrees while also saving around 5 or 6 watts of power. So really nothing to complain about there at all. Again this is just a reference graphics card. You're going to get a lot more out of an aftermarket card. Especially when it comes to the overclock. But that's something I might take a look at a bit later on. Right wrapping this one up. Really difficult video because the software is clearly not that long out of beta. And there were crashes and an awful lot of problems with the fan. So if you notice that while you're doing this. Your fan noise is all over the place. At some points it felt like the fan had a life of its own. So it's pretty difficult. I had to redo the benchmarks over days. But I did finally get there in the end. So hopefully this one was useful to you. And I'll catch you later guys.